It's Monday the 24th of August and um, the machining, machine shop still hasn't finished what they were wanting to do to that engine block and the cylinder heads and stuff like that so I thought well, I'd better get a jump and assemble some bits and pieces because some parts came in the other day and today is the day of the uh, oil pump in fact all this is the oil pump here it is marked here Hoburn so it is an oil pump not just a cover the old oil pump wasn't too bad you know it would clean up quite nice and it's, it's only gone like that because it's been stood for, for so long but I thought to myself well seeing we're going to make a good job of this we'll rebuild the pump now I can't remember if I showed the video of this but because it's been so long now the the only fault I could find really was this cover now you can't buy this separately for some bizarre reason I don't know why so I took it down to my machine shop and because there was some surface scratches on here and he, and he took one and a half thousandth of an inch off there uh, and now it's all lovely nice and flat all ground and everything you can tell by the light how nice it is now you can get away with that on this face if you see what I mean because but you can't machine in here because if there's a if there's wear in here for example then you're sort of screwed you know if the clearance is too large so what I'm going to do is I'm going to dry assemble this and I'm going to feel what it's like before I put any lubrication in and funnily enough <laughs> yes indeed it's our old friend Britpap but the uh, the rotor assembly was made in the UK bizarre eh? something made in the UK there it is nice piece of machining you know it's probably made in China putting a box in the UK but it doesn't really matter so I'm going to just pop that in dry like that and now I'm going to take the cover and I'm just going to feel it I'm going to put some weight on there oh oh that feels lovely there's no sort of play on there it's just right maybe a thousandth of an inch or so so I'm really pleased with that that's good so before we get all sort of uh, messed up and greasy put that back together and put it to one side we're going to assemble first of all the relief valve now again these are this this wasn't set up but I do look at the parts where I buy them from and again there's the relief valve spring made in the UK how does it compare to the original spring it's a lot taller if I got that right height yeah it's a lot taller and and it's a lot stiffer too so that means we should be able to keep our oil pressure up this engine was showing 93,000 kilometers on the uh, on the uh, odometer but I think it's done an awful lot and that looks a nice spring this one as you can see I don't know if you can see there you see it's all twisted over it's all bent so let's get some uh, lubrication right um, let's assemble this put a bit more vas I, I, I did a trial run on it put some Vaseline on it and it is kind of tricky to get in there there we go spring you can see how far it sticks out the end now the funniest thing about these jobs is that it never tells you in the workshop manual what to tighten this nut down to and it's a bugger to get in I can tell you that for sure now that's probably doing it wrong There's a considerable difference between this and the old one. There we go. Have a screwdriver, Andy? No. Back in the tick. So I just nipped it up with a hammer and a chisel, just tapped it on the edge like that, the same way as I got it off. <laughs> it's crazy. But anyway, you'd be wanting to know how this how this works. I've done it before, but we'll do it again. So your oil is sucked up here into this cavity here. 
and then it's squeezed by a process of the rotors here, so it's, it's sucked up here and squeezed out of here into this cavity here which then goes into your block through this uh, hole here <laughs> so it comes up this tube and this goes into your block and your oil passages when the oil pressure gets too high that little plunger that we just fitted in here will drop because the pressure is too high will drop down and any excess oil will go back into this cavity and be recycled. Isn't that clever? Well, let's put this together. And again, you want to be clean doing this. You know, it always wants to be nice and clean. If you get grit in your Vaseline or anything like that, just throw it out, bin it. Give it to your girlfriend or something like that. Because <laughs> it's no good. Has to be nice and clean. Well, let's put some in here just to get this started. Yeah, look at that. And the other reason for using Vaseline is that it, it won't sort of dry out so much like oil. Well, will do eventually, but the thing is, it'll re retain its vacuum. So then, very first few turns of this engine, it will all be nicely sealed. So. Uh, oil is sucked up this pipe from your oil pan and a lot of people have had troubles with this when engines have been left a long time you can't get oil pressure because the oil's back drained you maybe drain the sump off and the oil's all back drained out back drained down to the sump where there's no oil in it so it can't create a vacuum there we go Turn it till it goes in its slot. And then we'll fill these cavities up, like that famous Scottish dentist film a cavity. And that will give that a lovely head start. Then we'll take the cover and again we'll work some. Uh, oh, that's a bit now I'm staying away from the oil from the holes for a reason. It all will become clear. There we go. So why am I staying clear of that? Well, again, in the book it doesn't tell you what these little screws should be talked down to. It doesn't mention it at all. So I'm relying on the old trusty D Walt little gun there. And I'm going to put a little dob of uh, Tight on them, because they're nice and clean. Even though I bead blasted this cabinet, this this cover, it's been in the um, it's been in the ultrasonic several times, so I'm not too worried about that. It is lovely and clean. I think all the screws are the same length, isn't they? Now I'm just going to sort of whiz them down a bit. And now I'm just going to give them a quick rattle. Diagonally opposite, make sure it's nice and even, and that will be a lovely pump. That is a really nice pump. Oh, it's a bit too a bit tight. Oh, wait a minute. Is it too tight? I could see all the, uh, the stuff squidging out. Let me see if I can turn that around. I'd be worried there for a little bit. I've just got a bit of flat plate. It's very difficult to turn the pump when it's full of, uh, when it's full of Vaseline. So I've just got a flat piece of plate and you can see now it turns really nice. 
no worries with that at all. The grinding you can use my uh, grips here, but that's all right. That's that thing done. I suppose the next thing we could do is fit the oil seals in here too. Let's go and find them. So we're using uh, genuine cortico seals. That's why one well, the previous video when I said about the uh, the gasket set that that's the ones I was going to use. And um, it's always a reassuring sign when you see on the outside of a seal or a bearing the manufacturer's name. A lot of people leave that off, you know, those Chinese stuff leave that information off. And again, this one is the dust cover seal for the front cover. So how am I going to put those in there? Well, I'm going to press them in using my press because I'll get them nice and square and nice and even. If you're going to replace this crank seal on the car, you know, on the, on the vehicle itself, this is a little tool that I made years ago. Oh, it's two the old style uh, pulleys really shonkily welded together, but they're in line. And we made a big washer to fit over here so that the seal will fit like that and then that stops your depth if you see what I mean and I'm going to use that now so I can just press that down on this one here I'm going to use perhaps a washer in fact I might be able to use the same washer but let's see there's no point showing you how to press a seal in you've seen it all before if you're ever wondering when I fit this timing cover on that, uh, or should we say oil pump, I use this little device here to put on the end of the camshaft to protect the, the seal whilst it's been slid on. Clever, eh? So when you put your cam on, that will, just to say open that seal up, wide enough, and on it goes. Hey presto. And uh, a Jag shocker washer is perfect for putting these in. And then it gets them all the right height, if you see what I mean. Perfect. So I think that'll wrap that little section up. We've done that now. Let's have a look at something else. Now I'm going to put that in a plastic bag. That's good. That's good to go. We'll keep that little uh, thing there handy because we're going to be using that. The other thing I wanted to mention. I've got some uh, engine mounts here. Nothing flash there, bike. It's an engine mount. But I, I think, I don't know if, whether you've missed this before, but when I fit TDI engines instead of dropping them straight down you know onto a chassis if I have to put them and match them up to the gearbox I take the stud out of the bottom of here and that means on your chassis when you put your engine in it's nice and flat it goes straight in instead of having to fight with this stud so you're kicking your engine up to clear the stud take it out when your engines lined up screw it back in again now they, they, they screw in quite easy, some, some of them were loctited in so you might have to just warm it up a bit but I put a nylock nut on, this washer's is just to remind me to get a bigger flat washer but I put a nylock on and then, then when this bottoms out this nylock will work its way up and lock up that nice and securely when I can get it splutted out so that's that, that's, uh, that's that taken care of hmm, I wonder if there's anything else I could do let me have a look So I might as well do something about this oil filter housing. Um, it's quite straightforward, I've stripped it all down, I've bead blasted it and I've put it through the uh, ultrasonic. I'm going to quickly just test, make sure that the thermostat is working. I'm just going to use the hot air gun instead of using anything uh, too fancy. And see if that works. I'll move that packet out of the way before it melts. I did, I did this once before, but I just want to check make sure it's actually working. See, what happens is, the little pin sits in here, and then pushes the body down. There she goes. Can you see it working? That's working. That's lovely. 
There you go, see that's working. So I'll pause this while it cools down because that's going to be hot. <laughs> I always fit brand new OEM oil pressure switches to all these Land Rovers. I never trust the old ones. They've been in for like 20 odd years. And they only open at a very low pressure. Again, check your washer. Make sure it's not a steel one. And all they need is just a little nipple. Now I'm, even, even I'm just going to use a, a, a little wrench there just to nip that down a bit. I'm not going to go uh, great guns with this because it's only a little compressible copper washer on a fine thread. And that's all it's going to get. That's all it's going to get. This is still taking time. <laughs> so I might as well tell you about this. One of the principal causes of oil leaks on Land Rover on the 300 TDI is this housing here and principally this o-ring. Now I've looked high and low for these o-rings locally and they're either too big or too small so you've got to get the OEM ones, now I get them in packets of 10 and this is um, uh, OEM quality so ERC 5913 because you see when you take these out when you take these out of here, you can see here that there's a chamfer where the o-ring sits and it's just calculated for that, it's not in a, like a, a shoulder, it's just in a, in a taper. So you can actually put the wrong size o-ring in and snap these little lugs off here because it's too tight. Believe me I've done that before and it was thanks to Rob that we managed to find another uh, Thing. That is still warm. I can't put that back in. Yeah, Rob helped me find another one of them. So um, let me cool this down. And we'll assemble it. There we go. There's no uh, there's no sealer required in this. You don't have to put any sealer on it at all. And there you go. Make sure that the pin is located. Try it down. Hold it with your finger. There's no, no need for lock nuts, washers or anything like this because it's got a spring behind it. The bolts will be acting on that spring. It's just like a big spring washer. So I'll just get a little 8mm key and tighten that up. So there you go, all assembled, ready for a gasket and ready for a nice Marl oil filter. Now I won't put the oil filter on yet because I like to pre-charge the filters with oil before I fit them so that it's not it's got a fighting chance to get oil around this engine as quickly as possible if you see what I mean so when the engine's on the stand or on the hoist I'll fill it with oil and we'll spin it over make sure that the oil light goes out and we get oil pressure should I put an oil pressure gauge in here? well you could do I suppose you need a T to go in here because you need your light and a gauge um, I've always thought that oil pressure switch gauges, the way they're made today with a, just a nylon tube is sort of an accident waiting to happen in a four wheel drive because alright it's, nice it's nice to check your oil um, pressure but the thing is that line if it's not pr properly protected can chaff, I, in fact I think I've got one somewhere. Yeah, here we go, this is one I use for checking oil pressures. You can see that there it's only a very thin uh, nylon tube and if you know about Land Rovers and sharp edges or hot surfaces and things like this and things that rub and chaff this isn't always the best. Could you put some protection around it? Yes I guess you could. I, even I thought about putting it inside a copper pipe like a piece of brake pipe. You know just to, just to protect it just that bit and do a loop in the copper you know like they used to do in the olden days to uh, act like a spring. So that's it, that's the, uh, the oil pump done, the engine mounting's done and the oil pressure, oil filter housing done. I think we're out of jobs now so we'll call it a wrap on this and we'll just have to wait until we get our block back.